Joining me now is Brent Spiner, a uh, Broadway veteran, John Adams, in the revival of 1776. And those of you who are fans of the silver screen will no doubt recognize him from Star Trek The Next Generation. Did I get that right? You did. Oh, well, you, you said that they would recognize me. They may or may not. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. And we want to start just by talking about whatever it is that you're singing in the, in the show tonight. Tell us about it. Uh, well, I'm singing... Uh, a number called Rosie from Bye Bye Birdie with uh, legend Cheetah Rivera. You ever uh, performed with her before? I've never performed with her, but uh, I've been a, a huge fan of hers for years. And uh, uh, this is a number she did on Broadway a few years ago with Dick Van Dyke. And, you know, I'm a major Dick Van Dyke fan, too. So to be stepping in Dick's shoes and performing with Cheetah at the same time is beyond thrilling. Are there any people in this um, show tonight that you've never performed with that you're particularly excited to uh, meet and work with? Uh, no, nah, none of them really interest me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, uh, we'll be using that. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, um, well, if you want the real me, you will use that. Uh, actually, um, uh, I'm thrilled to be working with all of these people. I mean, I've never worked with with any of them, I don't think, except Graziella Danielle, who's choreographing, choreographed the uh, first Broadway show I ever did. And I've worked with Paul Gemignani, who's conducting a couple of times. But what? the performers, uh, Michael Crawford, Robert Goulet, I'm sharing a dressing room with Robert Goulet. I mean, that's going to be really interesting. Was he one of your musical heroes, one of your yeah. icons? You know what? I, 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 uh, when I was a kid, um, and it, you know, my mother was in love with Robert Goulet. And uh, actually, at the last Star Trek movie, a premiere, which was in Las Vegas, uh, Robert Goulet was there. And I saw him and I thought, oh, my God, there's Robert Goulet. I gotta go say hello. So I went over and I said to him, You know, Mr. Goulet, when I was a kid, uh, my mother and I, I used to listen to you. We used to listen to your albums every night when we had dinner. And he said, Used to. And I said, well, I don't have dinner with my mother anymore, so <laughs> I'm sure if I did, we'd be listening to Robert Goulet. But no, I'm, I'm thrilled, my God, Robert Goulet, Julie Andrews. I know Julie Andrews a little bit. I've met her a couple of times. I know her daughter uh, much better. She actually guessed it on that, uh, that space TV show I was on. So what is it about the theater that makes that more, less interesting, than the other venues that you've worked in, film, television? Uh, I, you know what, I don't think it is more or less interesting, really. I mean, uh, it's just plain interesting. If you're an actor, uh, you want to work all the venues. But theater was sort of the first love for uh, most people of my generation, at any rate. Uh, I grew up watching The Ed Sullivan Show. And uh, I mean, for those of you who don't remember Ed, he was like a well-known columnist here in uh, New York City. Believe me, I remember Ed. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I used to watch his show, and, and there was always, you know, scenes from Broadway shows. I saw uh, Itzio Pinza and Mary Martin do a number from South Pacific, and, you know, uh, Julie and Richard Burton and Robert Goulet doing Camelot. And as a kid growing up in Houston, Texas, uh, I wanted to be in the theater. I wanted to be a part of that. My God, I wanted to be on the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was my first love. I had a great teacher in college and in high school, uh, both, same teacher. His name was Cecil Pickett, and he was a really great man. My high school drama department uh, had some amazing talent in it. Uh, both of the Quaid brothers were in my high school uh, wow. drama department, and uh, he really nurtured us and, and really nurtured us to be in the theater more than anything. And um, so I knew that as soon as I was out of school, uh, I would be in New York trying to be in the theater. So it always feels probably like you're coming home. Always. It's, it's really an amazing thing. I mean, uh, when I came back to do 1776, it was like coming home. Only this time I got to come home to a really great part in a really great show, and uh, that was incredibly rewarding. Has there ever been a song or a scene or anything that you had to do on stage that you really didn't look forward to doing, and every time you had to do it, you grew to hate it more and more? You know, uh, 
I was in one of the biggest Broadway flops of all time, and it wasn't just the song, it was the whole show. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I did a show called The Three Musketeers. Um, I call it The Dreaded Three Musketeers, but it was a Rudolph Fremel operetta that they, uh, we did it in 1985 on Broadway. And um, it lasted, I think, six or seven performances, and it lost many millions of dollars. But it's the only time I can remember being on stage when the curtain went up, I was embarrassed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, and, and truly, there was nothing wrong with the show. There's some beautiful music in it. The only thing wrong with that particular production was uh, it needed to be on ice. You know, It was an ice capades, but there was no <laughs> ice. And uh, uh, I just simply was not trained to skate. You know, and, uh, there we were on a Broadway stage trying to skate, you know, without ice. Was there ever a, a time when you were singing a song? I know that all uh, performers have moments like this uh, where you drifted off in the middle of a song or in the middle of a scene uh, and sort of had a hard time finding your way back. Yeah. Anything that comes to mind? You know, it's really a difficult... I mean, it's one of the challenges of theater, particularly of a long run, to keep your focus and your concentration. Um, 1776 was an interesting show structurally because it opens with a big musical number and then there's not another song for almost an hour, 50 minutes without a song. And uh, it's a big debate and there are a lot of people involved in the debate. It takes place in the Continental Congress and they're debating whether to have a, you know, independence from, from England. And mm -hmm. uh, there are just times it, somewhere around the fifth or sixth month of a show, and you've been doing it eight times a week, when you're sitting on stage and uh, you're aware suddenly that there's just this really unpleasant silence going on, and you're... <laughs> and then you realize it's you, you know, and you should have been talking. And uh, uh, when you got a big ensemble and you do something like that, the tendency for the other people in the show is to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and that really doesn't work in the middle of a hot debate in the Continental Congress, you know, when all the congressmen are suddenly laughing for no particular reason. <laughs> all the audience knows is there was silence, then there was laughter, but they don't know why. It's really a terrifying proposition. All, but the, it, it, all the dead people in On the Town. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it really encourages you, though, to uh, concentrate every night as much as you can. You really can't let go of it because... The audience has paid good money, for God's sakes, and uh, they deserve better than your uh, drifting off thinking about what you're going to order at Joe Allen's later. You know? <laughs> um, I want to move on to the topic of public television because I don't want to run out of tape and right. not have done this. Exactly. Um, are you a public television fan? I am. A, I am a public television fan, as a matter of fact. And uh, what makes it worth watching? For me, uh, what makes it worth watching? And let me just say. Uh, to the viewing public right now, what makes public television worth watching is it simply has the best programming. It's that easy. Uh, I don't watch a lot of television, but when I watch television, all I watch is PBS. And uh, people watching this right now could do me a huge favor by contributing to PBS and making sure it stays on the air so I have something to watch. Please give to PBS. And so they have something to watch Yeah, and as so they well. have something to watch, too. Exactly. All right. Um, well, since we still have a little bit of tape, let's just ask a couple more questions. And can you say the same thing on behalf of 13? Okay. okay. Oh, on behalf of 13? Right. Yeah. Exclusively focusing on 13 as opposed to PBS. Oh, I see. I yeah, see. that would be used locally. Here, I'll just I'll okay. give you the same question, lead All into right. it. Um, you live in New York? Oh, sorry. You know, I can do it cold if you want. Sure. Uh, I'm asking all of you if you if you could to please watch Channel 13 and to give to 13. Uh, it's the only television really that I enjoy watching, and if you care about that at all, you'll give to 13 so I have something to watch. Also, so that you have something to watch too. Channel 13. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Just give him a thank you though, so I can. Oh, I'm okay. I'm going to change battery here, so I'm going to okay. hold on one second. Okay. I'll just say thank you, Brent. Well, you said okay. thank you before, so we can bust that in. Okay. okay. Did I? Mm -hmm. or, you, or you could uh, take thank you, Robert Goulet. And, <laughs> and, uh, thank you, Robert. I mean, thank Brent. You very much. He still sings great, doesn't he? It's like he really fabulous. does. You know, I mean, I, what I most want to ask him uh, when I'm in the dressing hey. room is, 
how is it your hair is so much darker than mine? I, I no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't tell him I no, said that, well, please. No one will ever believe. It's still rolling. Michael Parade. Oh, really? Michael Parade, yeah. Was in that three musketeers. Okay, Michael, Michael Parade. Rolling. Rolling. It is? Okay. I thought it was Parade. So I should just thank him or you want me to ask? Yeah, that's the thing. Wonderful guy. Oh. I thought it was well, one of the same guys, so, so yeah. I've been wrong all Richard. these years. Well, we're not rolling, Richard. <laughs> okay, come on, we're trying to win an Emmy yeah. here. All right. <laughs> it can yeah. be done. But she's, are you rolling? Yeah, until you move your fingers. Good. What are you doing? Thank you. Go. Okay. Thank you, Brent Spiner. Thank you, pleasure to be here. It was as easy as that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Voila. Okay. Right. Ooh, that was good. Still have a minute left? No. Well, keep going. No. Keep going? <laughs> keep going. <laughs> you know, the rule, ask the rules question. The rules. Rules. Okay. Right Are there any rules about being in Broadway musical, do's and don'ts? Yeah. The only real firm rule is uh, you, you cannot bore people. Uh, that, you know what, really, the prices of theater tickets these days is so astronomical that it, it really is uh, offensive if you go out on the stage and bore people. It's just not allowed. They must be entertained. That is a rule. When people watch your performance tonight, what should they be looking for? Sweat, uh, <laughs> basically. Uh, you know, we've had precious little rehearsal for this, and I'm a rehearsal kind of guy. I don't like to wing it where music is concerned. You can ad lib on, on stage, if, you know, in a straight play, but when something goes wrong with uh, your performance, the music doesn't wait for you, you know, it just keeps going. Uh, and uh, you have to run and catch up with it. Uh, but, I, I, you know, we, we have kind of like, I just got into New York to do this, and I, in another three weeks, I'm going to be brilliant in this show tonight. <laughs> Just think Billy Crystal. Think Billy Crystal. Academy <laughs> Awards, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay.